Hello. So I thought I'd do a video about, uh, like, uh, this because I get, I get asked this a lot. Like, people, like, always, like, ask me why I don't invest in certain heroes. I mean, I've done videos on this. I've touched on this many times. Like, uh, people, though, like, ask me, like, is Cleaver bad because I haven't bothered to invest in him? Or is Dante bad because I haven't bothered to invest in him? Like, and the answer is, it's not that those heroes are necessarily bad. It's that I have no use for him. To me, these heroes are useless to me because, well, Right, Cleaver is a tank, and I already have a well-developed tank in Aurora, so there's no point in developing Cleaver, and Aurora is just an all-around better tank, so it's just better to develop Aurora, and uh, Dante has a similar problem, that Dante wants to fill kind of a similar role to Aurora while being worse than Aurora. Like, Dante, like, he's he's also a dodge buffer, he's just one of three heroes in the game who can buff dodge, and, uh, right, but the difference is that Aurora is actually a tank, so maxed out Aurora has a lot better... Stats, Judante does do physical damage, which can be both an advantage and a disadvantage. Um, he is a good hero, though. That's not, like I said, me not investing in him does not mean he's not a good hero. He's actually a very good hero, but the problem is, uh, most people should totally invest in Aurora, because Aurora is quite literally the third best hero in the game after Sebastian Celeste. And having Aurora, like I said, because she's a tank, she fills the tank role. Like, Dante can fill the damage role, but he can't really tank. I mean, he can tank in certain situations, but he is not a replacement for an actual tank. Also, Dante does not have good magic mitigation. He takes magic damage pretty badly. Doesn't have any magic defense, like in his glyphs or his skins, or I don't even know if he has it in his ascension. Like, yeah, no, he does not have, like, magic defense. Well, I guess he has some in ascension, but he doesn't get a lot of magic defense, so he so he does take magic de damage quite a lot, whereas Aurora has the literal best magic mitigation in the game, thanks to Rainbow Halo. So it's like Aurora can do most of the stuff Dante can, but plus while also being a very effective tank and having great magic mitigation. It's not that Dante is bad, though. It's that Dante is kind of useless for most players. Most players should invest in Aurora. And, well, Dante, he's good in certain teams. Like, if you go look, like, he'll be, you'll see him at the high end. Like, let's see if we can find, like, no, nope, Ishmael's kind of like the hotness now, though. You'll see Ishmael a lot more. But there you go. You'll see him with, like, Arachne sometimes. Like, a team like this. The Rachne is the tank, though. That one, I said, I think you blow that one out with Trinity Twins Core, of course. Like, we could try some of these teams. Um. Teams using, so there's a, there's a Dante Amira team. There you go. There's one with Dante, Rachne. We have Corvus. Like, that one, I could, should be able to beat pretty easily. Trinity Twins. There you go. Aurora, Dante. There's one with Aurora and Dante. I actually think Aurora and Dante are kind of an awkward fit together because only one of them can use Kane. So usually if you use an Aurora, um, like, well, plus Dante, it's kind of like you're probably going to be using Kane on Aurora. Um, and then have Dante with, like, Fenris. It's a bit of an awkward fit. Like, this, so teams like this are pretty common. You'll have Rufus, Arachne, Dante, Iris. Um, oh, here's one with Dante as a tank. Like, and you don't see this too well often because it's not particularly effective. Um, there's a, see, there's an Ishmael. Like I said, you'll see Ishmael a lot more than Dante these days. Like, there's a Dante one again. That one's like easy, but you beat that one with twins, uh, Celeste, Aurora, uh, Morgan. Like, anything like Aurora is generally the best counter to Dante, but there are some Aurora Dante teams. I actually don't think they fit that well together. But, uh, even then, it's like you'll see Aurora used a lot. And that's like, so the best counter to Dante is an Aurora. But we can actually do some battles here. Let's set up some battles. So we'll use like, so one of the most common teams I actually do see Dante with is actually with Rufus. You'll see Rufus, Dante, um, Arachne, Sebastian, Martha. Like this is a line I'll see a lot. I see this kind of line a lot. Probably Albus here. You'll see a line like this a lot. And uh, I usually, like I said, you can beat this one full auto, usually with, unless you get some bad dodge. dodge RNG does have a play a big role in this game. But you keep Kane on Aurora, because Kane dodge buff spamming is how you beat Dante. And Aurora has more life done, so this is how you beat Dante's Aurora, with Kane patron dodge buff spam. Use uh, Celeste, and then because they have Arachne, you need Sebastian.
I mean, this is just a line you can use to beat it on auto with. This one usually works, like I said, for this particular line. If they have Helios or Sun instead of Mars, so sometimes you'll see Helios instead of Mars. Obviously, Yasmin works much worse against that line because Helios counters her pretty effectively. He's he's a, he's a hard counter to Yasmin, assuming he's he's developed enough. Sebastian's down. Right, Morgan can create a lot. So Morgan's minions distract both Arachne and Dante. Like, so now they end up start targeting those minion things. So Morgan's just really good versus Dante and Arachne in general, but also Morgan's a hard counter to Rufus. But this line works really well. Holy Trinity, Yasmin, Morgan. This is generally how I beat... This is one way to beat these lines. Actually, it's not the, generally how I beat this line. This is my kind of like my my go-to recommendation for people for this particular line because you can auto it because some people most people for whatever reason don't learn how to play in manual combat and I, don't, I don't understand why because it's such a huge part of like maximizing your power in this game like if you want to actually win more like you know playing in manual will like I said raise your ceiling quite a bit See, there you go. And then Morgan hard counters Rufus. Rufus doesn't revive there, even though he died to pure damage. And boom, there's a win. Like, so that's a way to win. Like, you look at the things there. Dante did not do near as much. Like, Aurora does more damage than Dante because of dodge dodging. Because Aurora is buffing the, the dodge spam. Like, because of dodge buff spam, like, Aurora is protecting her team from physical attacks, but Dante is not protecting his team from magic damage. So Aurora ha always has the advantage of Dante because Aurora uh, protects her team versus physical attacks. Dante protects his team versus physical attacks. Dante does physical damage. Aurora does magic damage. So Aurora is usually going to out-damage Dante in a face-to-face -face match, which gives Aurora an advantage versus Dante teams. Um, the way I usually beat that team, I usually use uh, Trinity Twins plus Kane. Um, so, we came, Crystal, Lars, and Celeste, and where's Sebastian? All over here. Alright, so this one, like I said, we'll just auto speed up till about 25 seconds of past. Okay. Right, so reason we oh, like I said we don't auto after like I said you want to keep you, we use we auto for the first uh, ult on King, but we want to keep his kunai is full for the killing blow. Like Rufus only dies if the mad final hit is physical damage, or unless you're using like uh, a way to block him from rezzing, such as uh, Jet or Morgan. But uh, this is like my preference preferred way to beat it. I do think this is more consistent if you are to your timing's good. Alright, so you have to make sure he doesn't have an armor buff up, so you just kinda gotta find your timing here. He's got to be patient. Just like that. Boom. That kills him. Like, that's how I usually kill him. You just find a moment when the armor buffs, when he's alone, there's no armor buff up, and there's no, like, in your pike, and you got your timing down, so you know Lars isn't going to try killing him in that moment. That's when you unload Kane. 
But uh, like that's a, that's my preferred method to beating that line because it's pretty much 100% effective. And if you do mess up, you probably got a 19, 20 point win, like 20 point loss. Like it'll just be Rufus left. So you'll probably have like a 19 out of 20. So it's an easy clean up in a guild war. So like that's generally how I beat that line. Um, Then we have like teams that will have like Dante tanking. What was that one? Was it Dante, Leanne? Let's go look at that one. What was that guy? Like there was a guy who had like a Dante tank team, but we had like Leanne. Was it the 12th player? This one right here. Dante, Sebastian, Leanne, Jet, Martha. Like, that one seems interesting. Let's try this one. Martha, Jets, Leanne. Where's Dante? Go, Dante. Jets. Assume that these are patrons they would use. This is kind of a guess. Like patrons can change though. You like sometimes it's advantageous to change your patrons, but uh I'd imagine with Dante up front they're using Kane on him. That Fenris is the only other option. Fenris sucks. The only reason you wouldn't use Kane on Dante is because you're pairing him with Aurora. Pretty much like you have him behind Aurora. Like that's the only time you wouldn't. But let's try. Let's see if we can get a win here. So we'd probably want Chorus here. We definitely want Sebastian. Yeah, Leanne is kind of like... Leanne I fear more than Dante, but... This is kind of like... Dante is going to take a whole lot of success. See, Dante gets stunned because he takes such a hard hit from Celeste. But the dodge buffs here... Like, Dante literally did no damage from thanks to the dodge buffs. And that's the thing, Aurora can protect her team versus Dante's damage, but Dante cannot protect his team from Aurora's damage. But he's already dead because Celeste, like I said, he has no magic mitigation, so he takes damage like a chump, whereas Aurora has the best magic mitigation in the game, and that's part of why I don't invest in Dante. Like, there's just, like, once you, if you have Aurora, Dante is not as valuable to you, and, well, everyone should really just be investing in Aurora. Like, Dante's good, though. He's good for, like, clashes. He's good for, like, Grand Arena. He's good for, like, kind of like a secondary team. He's pretty good on defense versus, like, in Guild Wars and stuff, but he's such a low priority. He's what you call, we call a luxury hero. He's, he makes sense for players who are spending lots of money on this game who can max out 20 plus heroes. Like, if you're going to be, if you're somebody who wants to spend $10,000 or more on this game, Dante makes a lot of sense. Like, he makes a lot of sense for, like, Uber Wells. Like, he is a good hero. He's, it's like, me not using him does not mean he's not good. It's just, I'm not using him because, well, I don't see the point of investing in him because he's not going to really do much to improve my win rates. Like I said, if we lose this fight, it's because of Leanne, not because of Dante. Leanne is such a hard thing to deal with, but then again, a... Like, if the end does magic damage, Aurora will do some rainbow halo damage out here, so. It's like I said, we'll see what happens here. Okay, well, there was a rainbow halo damage, I think. Or maybe, maybe it just, it just killed it with her thing there. Yeah, there's some rainbow halo damage. Yeah, no, Leanne will just sometimes just time you out. Oh, we just lost Celeste, so this will probably be a timeout. Just I said, it's Leanne that's killing us, not Dante. Yeah, this is going to be a timeout. Yep, that's what Leanne does. I hate Leanne. Like, Chorus does give you some help there, but uh, you do need Celeste to seal the deal. I probably could have finished that off in manual, but we're mostly about Dante here, not Leanne. But uh, I, Leanne is honestly one of the heroes I hate facing the most. Like, Leanne is just such a... He's such a tough hero to deal with. Like, I actually think Leanne... Like I said, Chorus has made her worse, but uh, it just... Like, Celeste did not survive, and I think I need to switch to manual. Like, if I played that in manual, I should have won. But we're to hear about Dante, and, uh, yeah, no, that's the main thing. Like, I just, there's just not a lot of value for me to invest in him. Like, if you're one of those players, like, like, so if you've been looking at my themes, right, it's like you go, 
you know, he's good. Like, you know, I wouldn't, he's probably not worth doing in your top 15. Like, there's better things like Aurora, Sebastian, Celeste, then you got Isaac, Jew, Nebula, Martha, that's seven. Then I have twins, Arachna, Maya. And then I want stuff like Yasmin or Amira, right? To counter certain lines and heroes and Thea. Like, and you just kind of like, it just, so he's just so far down the list. Like, he's not like the first 15 heroes. Like, I just, it's hard for me to justify him. Like, you know, maybe his hero 20 something, then he makes a lot more sense. Like, we're currently working on Dorian, um, Aiden, and Amira. Those are my project heroes right now. Um, so he just, he's just way low on priority. There's just, he's not going to do a whole lot to help me win Guild Wars. He's not going to help me in raids. Like, raids, like, yo, know, we're trying to work on Dorian because, uh, yo, know, he could help in Guild Raids. You know, maybe we can get some more damage. Like, because I've been using this one line versus, uh, this is versus the 150 boss. And then against the 160 boss, I actually did 109 million with the Stone Cold line. And, uh, I actually think if we got Dorian up, we could actually do, uh, you know, 20 plus million to the 160 boss with this line here. But the thing about this line here, you see how Dorian gets teleported up there by Corvus? Right, so Dorian, my this Dorian is not strong enough to survive on 160, but because he's there, Yasmin's now getting all the vampires, like the whole thing to get vampires, but now Yasmin can actually survive here. Do a bunch of pure damage, which helps all this. Like, this is actually a pretty good team. Like, uh, like so Dorian's well as heroes, I definitely am interested in like developing because we're trying to like my like said, my like for me, like there's nothing there's not really any heroes I can do that can help me in PvP anymore. Like, Dante's not going to help me versus Lash the Keeper. And I have everything I need to really win versus PvP. Like, I have, like said, right? I don't even use Corvus. Corvus is like one of those guys, heroes. I invested Corvus primarily for Ash the, for this line in Ash Keeper because it's actually a pretty good secondary line. Like, I, don't, I never use him in, I never use him in Guild Wars. Like, he's useless to me in Guild Wars. Dante would be the same way. I would just, I'd probably almost never use him in Guild Wars. So, why waste the resources? Why waste the rip money on him? Um, anyway, not much more to say about this. If you want to know more about Dante, I did a video about him back in November, which you can find below.